We are back once again. Each and every year, horror movies are being pumped out, and sadly, they're not all original concepts, but often sequels or soft reboots that feel the need to retread or copy exactly what their predecessor did. These are the top five dumbest horror movie sequels, part five. Let's jump in. Coming in at number five, we have Saw 3. I mean, at this point, I could simply just start listing off all the Saw movies after the first two. They're all pretty dire. Released in 2006 and directed by Darren Lynn Bozeman, Saw 3 stars the likes of Tobin Bell, Shawnee Smith, Angus McFadden and Dina Meyer, with the plot following Jeff, a man whose son was killed by a drunk driver and is put through a series of tests by Jigsaw intended to help him overcome his anger towards his son's killer. However, while this is all going on, a bedridden John Kramer has his apprentice Amanda kidnap a doctor who is tasked with keeping John alive for one final game before he dies. Saw 3 seemed to be the tipping point for the entire franchise, with the first movie being a genuinely well executed psychological thriller, and the second movie being a truly terrifying story of survival. Saw 3, however, seemed to introduce to us the new direction of the franchise, relying on more gore and absurd deaths rather than focusing on the plot itself. It just became gratuitous and over the top, with the series moving forward being a gore fest with little to no substance. Still a fun time though. I will still watch each and every one of them. Except Jigsaw. What a load of sh Before we jump into number four, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out a lot. Coming in at number four, we have Boogeyman 2. Quite honestly, I'm not sure if I have any memory of the original Boogeyman movie or even saw it. None of these movies seem to stick out to me. Released in 1983 and directed by Bruce Pern, Uli Lommel and Paul Wilson, Boogeyman 2, also known as Revenge of the Boogeyman, is a horror film that was banned in the United Kingdom as a video nasty during the 80s, like its predecessor. Now, the original 1980 movie refers to the long-held superstition of the Boogeyman, with the plot revolving around two siblings who are targeted by a ghost of their mother's deceased boyfriend who has been freed from an imprisoned mirror. I mean, even the plot of the original movie seems like a joke to me. Now, the sequel takes place six months after the events of the first movie, with Lacey visiting some friends as she attempts to get over the events that transpired in the first film. However, the horror isn't over with a piece of glass appearing from the first movie, and of course, Killings begin once again. Classic. The film is essentially a carbon copy of the first film, with around 25 minutes of the movie being made up of clips from the first film. Not to mention it's predictable, cheesy, and ultimately it's kind of boring, which is the worst part of the entire thing. You can hate a film but still be entertained while hating it. However, this movie gives you nothing but misery, with you counting down the minutes until it's over. If you even get through the full thing, you'll probably turn it off. Also, they did go on to remake these movies in 2007. Those films are also very I think I saw it once. I remember the film just being very dark. I never could see anything, you know? You know when a film is just dark? Where it's never, the sun's never out. <laughs> That's how I feel every time I watch Silent Hill. I'm like, why is it so dark? Someone turn the lights on. Coming in at number three, we have Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Remember when Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey starred in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie? No, well, that's okay because most people have chosen to forget it, including them, probably. Released in 1994 and directed by Kim Henkel, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation is the fourth installment in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series and follows four teenagers who encounter Leatherface and his family in the backwoods of Texas on the night of their prom. Like most of the movies on our list, it seems to be a shameless rehash of its predecessor. However, worse still, it's less of a massacre and more of a mess. One IMDb commenter stated, I quote, Watching this movie is like having someone kick you in the head for two hours, only to find out that you've just survived the warm-up session and the worst is yet to come. It is a cheap looking slasher that can barely live up to the franchise's legacy, but it is fortunate to have two stars in it, who successfully rose to fame long after this film was released. However, a few people disagreed with me, with Joe Bob Briggs championing it. Referring to it as, I quote, a flick so terrifying that it makes the other two sequels seem like an after school special. So, everyone take a peek and give me your honest opinion. So, I didn't even delve right deep into all the cross dressing stuff. There's so much going on in this movie. Coming in at number two, we have The Birds 2 Land's End. Quite honestly, I had no idea there was even a sequel to The Birds until writing this list, and I now wish I could erase my memory of this information. Released in 1994 and directed by Rick Rosenthal, but credited as Alan Smithy, classic. For those who don't know, anyone credited as Alan Smithy, it's a pseudonym? Yeah. 
It's a pseudonym for someone who wants to disown their work. <laughs> they have such shame they don't want to put their name on it. So they become Alan Smithy. I wonder who Alan Smithy was. He was probably a bad guy. <laughs> the Birds do Land's End stars the likes of Brad Johnson, Chelsea Field, James Norton, Jan Rubis and Tippi Hedren. Similar to the original film, the sequel follows a biology teacher and Somali Civil War veteran named Ted who moves with his wife and daughters to a summer home on an island following the death of their son. However, not long after arriving, flocks of birds begin attacking and killing people for seemingly no apparent reason, just like the first movie. The plot itself quite literally states Birds go berserk and turn against mankind. The movie pretty much retreads what the original did already, however sadly there is no Alfred Hitchcock at the helm. Now Tippi Hedren, who was of course the star of the original film, made a cameo appearance in the sequel. Unfortunately even she was disappointed with her presence, stating that she should have had a bigger role and then went on to describe the film as absolutely horrible. It embarrassed me horribly. Well she isn't the only one, with director Rick Rosenthal disowning the film as well, which was a misguided follow up, where still he would go on to direct. Halloween Resurrection, which I don't know what's worse. Halloween Resurrection was on a previous part of this list. And finally, in at number one, we have Leprechaun 4 in Space. By popular demand, this movie takes our number one spot, and I think there is no debate as to whether or not this should be the case. Released in 1997 and directed by Brian Trenchard Smith, Leprechaun 4 in Space is the fourth installment in the Leprechaun series. With it following the Leprechaun who resurfaces on an alien planet who then abducts a member of the world's royalty, Princess Zarina, in an attempt to marry her and become the supreme ruler. However, things don't go quite to plan, with soldiers arriving arriving to foil his plans with the leprechaun forced to battle against them. Now I should state that the entire leprechaun series is campy as hell and filled to the brim with pure ridiculousness however that does not excuse this mess of a movie. I mean come on, a leprechaun and space marines battle each other over a princess named Zarina. The space theme seems to be a shameless ploy to continue a dying franchise which is so clearly apparent and kinda sad. It's completely absurd and it's time in your life that you will certainly never get back. So if you have any kind of self respect, don't watch this movie. I have no self respect, I have no respect for myself. So I watched it twice. Well there we have it, do you guys agree with that list? What's the worst movie you've ever seen? Have you ever walked out of a movie? I have. I walked out of a movie called Right At Your Door. It was a pandemic movie. <laughs> long long time ago, before I ever thought we'd be in a pandemic. It was also sh Anyway, leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part oh, two, we're on six now. And perhaps we can do a part six. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments one of our last videos. Top five scary, conjuring universe demons. Eric Peterson said, my favorite is the crooked man, putting together an inspired by costume for him next Halloween. The crooked man is legit. I'm had, I've got him on my part two for that list. Even though I'm starting to get away from demons and just talking about more creepy creatures and haunted people ghosts. But yeah, he's freaky as f He's essentially Valak, just in a different form. Anyway, I'll save that for my list. Michael Burke said, the furry man was far and away my favourite antagonist, so much potential. Very true, he deserves his own movie. He was creepy as hell. He takes people's souls. Frightening. The Bright Side said, oh my god yes, back at the studio. Oh my god yes. I'm so excited to be outside in the world. It's nice to be back. It's nice having someone else film you, you know? I hated filming at home. So thank you, Chris. Cali Boy Production said Lucy's pronunciation of Spanish words is hilarious with her accent. I tried my best. La Llorona. <laughs> it's the accent, makes everything sound weird. Devastating said, I love this so so much. Please keep the vids coming. Well, the vids are always gonna be coming. You're stuck with me. And you're welcome. Why are we always yelling? Said Lucy made me do it. I made you do what? What did you do? But to be fair, I hope I made you do it. I hope I make you all do it. And you know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And until next time, I'll see you later. Everyone's dying. Everyone's dying. Were you just silently? Uh, you professionally dying over here for the last two minutes. Was it like that classic like meme of someone trying to hold in a cough and they're like, <laughs> but you know you're gonna make noise no matter what, because then it starts to like erupt in your throat and then it, it becomes even more embarrassing because you're like, <laughs> we've all been there. <laughs>